thank you for joining me for today's interesting exploration into plasma. This is a, um, a channeled seminar. I'm Rebecca Dawson. Thank you for joining me and the masters as they come through and lead us into more understanding and a deeper feel for this concept of plasma. Okay, so hi everyone. Hopefully you can all see and hear me just fine. I'm just going to um, ask you today if there are any questions uh, or comments to pop them in the chat bar. Uh, I am a one man band here, so I prefer not to use the Q&A or the raise hand section. So just, um, just be aware that uh, the chat bar will be showing for me, but nothing else will. So I'm very happy that there's so many people from around the world joining us today. We have uh, several hundred people who are going to be tuning in. And uh, if you're not listening to this live, uh, you will be receiving the recordings tomorrow. So um, this is a really interesting topic that first became uh, came into our seminars with the Masters some months ago. We did about eight weeks uh, series on uh, a topic around creation and how the fabric of the universe works and how that's related to human potential because we are also the universe <laughs> and another design of the universe so um a part of that series there was a lot of people asking questions that wanted to know more about plasma so rather than answer questions in that series we decided to do a seminar dedicated just to the topic of plasma because it's such an important one. Um, I don't know much about it myself with my own human mind. I'm, I'm not a scientist, as you know, uh, but I do like to explore topics that are highly relevant to our design. And as you know, my greatest joy in life is exploring human potential. I really feel that that's, uh, that's what my current role in humanity is. So those of you who haven't uh, explored with us before, I do, um, I am an aspect of, and they are an aspect of me, a team of masters that come through. Um, sometimes we get um, streams of consciousness from other galaxies and universes as well. <laughs> so we'll just have to wait and see what happens today. Uh, but there will be opportunity for questions in today's seminar. I don't know how many we will get to, but we will certainly do our best to answer those for you. Okay, so I'm just going to begin and dive straight in. Greetings to you, blessed ones, we are with you. Indeed, it is a glorious time to be exploring the nature of yourselves. So much confusion around you at this time in your reality. Of course, the perfection that can be discovered is within yourselves and indeed within your own human design. So much of what you have learned is that humans are moving towards regulation. And indeed, in terms of your own emotional and mental and physical capacities, there's very much an emphasis on regulation to move towards what you believe is a sense of perfection. However, the actual creative capacity for the human arises from a sense of non-regulation, a sense of, if you will, chaos. And so it's very important to know that when you're experiencing a sense of chaos, not only in your external reality, but perhaps also within yourselves, that it is actually an invitation towards understanding what your truest potential as a human is. When we speak of the concept of plasma, and we will speak of it as a concept for you at this time, because the human mind has difficulty grasping that which is nonlinear, the concept of plasma is a wonderful foray into your true design as aspects of consciousness. It's easy for a human to understand that they have a design, they have a blueprint, and therefore they have a particular pre-directed experience in life. This has been understood through concepts of souls, concepts of blueprints, concepts of journeys, concepts of karmic history, and so on, whereby there are predetermined or preconceived patterns of experience and limitations of potential 
that will ultimately dictate and determine the ramifications of your actions. In other words, the effect of whatever it is that you express into your reality. Even though there is often been a sense within you, perhaps within your meditative practices, perhaps within some of your more profound internal experiences that you are in actuality limitless, what you have discovered within your third dimensional reality is that indeed there are constraints and limitations to the effects that your presence can have. Now, each and every one of you who are with us in this moment have actually moved beyond your concept of wanting to receive something from life. And indeed, many of you have reignited again your interest in what is it possible for me to actually express and therefore what is the possible effect of my existence in this life. And this is a wonderful place to begin your inquiry. Because the human is no different in many ways to the star. You are, as your chemists are beginning to understand, made up of a very similar combination of substances as a star. But beyond that, and much more importantly, the mechanism of your own expression as a creative force is the same as that of a star. In other words, the actual fusion energy that is created for a star is also created within yourself. And so in this way, the true nature of the human is actually designed to create. It's very interesting because humans often believe that they're designed to actually move forward and carry out that which is already created. Your genetic blueprint, for example, and therefore you live from that, or a family legacy, or perhaps a sense of nationalism or perhaps a particular role or identity that has been assigned to you or that you have adopted. And that from there, it is your duty and your nature and your great, perhaps, soul's journey to carry that out. And yet, humanity at this time finds themselves in a state of confusion. Because as humanity moves into a new paradigm of reality, indeed towards fifth dimensional experience, There's no longer a sense of satisfaction within the most conscious and awakened humans for carrying out designs that are already in place. And so this marks the great renaissance for humans, where they begin to remind themselves that actually they are here to create, not to create effect from something that has already occurred. In other words, you are no longer the bridge between cause and effect. You actually reposition yourselves back into Genesis. Now, when we speak of the term Genesis, Genesis is a very important concept for you because Genesis is that state at which all potentials are possible. In other words, there's no design yet. There's no limitation. There's no containment. There's no expectation and there's no roadmap for effect. And indeed, this is where many humans at this time find themselves in a state of not knowing, in a state of perhaps a nuance of completion and yet not knowing what to begin. So if you find yourselves at this time in a state where you feel as if things are ending but you don't know what to begin, you are returning to your natural state of genesis. And it's interesting because as you do this vibrationally, not only does it mark the beginning of a new era for humanity, the first one in over 300,000 years, but it also marks the beginning of genesis in your genetic coding. And this is very important also because it's been very difficult for humanity to have a different series of effects from their presence other than that was that which was already embedded in your genetic blueprints. So when you find yourself in this state of genesis, this state of limbo, this state of not knowing, your cells are also having the opportunity to actually begin to create space for new blueprints, new possibilities, new experiences to begin to unfold. So what we say unto you is that plasma itself 
as the human mind could understand it, is a state of pre-matter or a state of reality whereby design has not yet been overlaid on top of it. On top of it. So plasma itself is pure potential. It's pure potential that has not yet been assigned a value and it is not yet being signed a particular format for expression. So plasma itself exists beyond your third dimensional ability to ascertain it. The greatest experience you can have of plasma at this time is found through the experience of not knowing. And for many of you, it is the experience of not knowing where you drop beneath the confusion and the desperation of wanting to know. And suddenly there's a sense of quickening within you. It's a quickening experience. It's a particular vibration that is not yet assigned, not yet has a sense of direction, but has an incredible amount of power within it. So if you can imagine for one moment that the fusion energy that is created when two particles move into complete resonance with each other, there is a very excited sense of agreement that happens. This can happen for you many times when you come into contact or association with another human that is in resonance within you. Or there is a particular idea that emerges within you. Or you are in a particular location or in a state with a natural environment where there is an agreement, there is a sense of resonance that is happening there, and you feel a quickening of energy. Sometimes it's like a flash or a pulse of inspiration, and yet there's nowhere to direct that energy. So when you experience fusion energy as a human, be very aware that it is different from a complete merging because your scientists have understood at this time that fusion energy and plasma resulting from that fusion energy is actually created when two particles merge. And there are a lot of experiences and experiments that are con being conducted about this, particularly when it comes to magnetic energy that that magnetic energy can facilitate the merging of two particles. What we want to say about this is that because humans view everything in terms of linearity, the linear mind and your third dimensional sense of time and space demands that this fusion energy can occur when two particles can completely come together, when two become one. And yet the difficulty within your reality is that you live in a linear reality whereby distance is always there. It's almost impossible for you to actually witness physically a merging of two particles because of this problem of distance. If everything in your reality is measurable, there's always going to be a distance. This indeed is why it's almost impossible for humans to experience instantaneous creation. There's always a sense of process because there's always a distance between cause and effect. So while your scientists are trying to discover how it is possible to actually merge two particles that exist in exactly the same frequency, we would instead direct your attention to the space of agreement, the space of resonance that occurs between two particles when they actually begin to vibrate at exactly the same frequency. Now, this is very important for you to understand because in your third dimensional reality, there isn't actually a requirement for two particles to merge in order for creation or plasma to occur. All that is required is a field of resonance to be created. In other words, when two particles or two people or two concepts or two ideas move at exactly the same frequency, there is a field that is created between the two. That field is the plasmic field. Now that field is the creation space. It is the space between it is the space between 
And this is incredibly important because so much of human attention and mind will go to marker points in time and space and not the space between. Humans are very distracted by features on a map rather than the spaces between the features. So potential will always sit between the in the spaces between features, in the spaces between points that are recognizable. In other words, potential will always sit in the spaces that have not yet been identified in the unknown. So those of you who have been going through experiences of elevated consciousness, be very aware, aware that it is in the moments of the unknown that the potential arises. It's exactly the same as what we're speaking about with plasma, because remember, humans and plasma are one and the same. Even within your own biology, there is so much attention towards all the different components within your body all the different components that make up the system or what you believe is the system, the mechanical or electrical system in your biology, rather than looking at the spaces between these identifiable aspects of you. This is also to be understood and recognized within your sense of self or personal identity. Because so many of you at this time are coming to a point where it's very difficult for you to describe yourself or to identify yourself. If someone was saying to you, well, who are you? Tell me about yourself. Many of you, the more awakened you're becoming, are realizing that it's very difficult to identify because you're starting to naturally become, once again, a creator human, a creator species, which means that anything identifiable about you no longer has any sense of relevance. It's being done. It's not interesting. It perhaps doesn't resonate with you anymore. So because humans are moving back into an experience of Genesis once again, within your identities, within the consciousness of humanity, within your cells, within your lives, within the collective consciousness, your state of comfort at this time will not be found in that which is readily identifiable. It will only be found in the spaces between those points. So if many of you are saying at this time, well, I'm between chapters in my life, I'm between this and that, I'm between my past and the future, that is exactly where you need to be. This is why in your meditative practices, it is all about moving in the space between thoughts. Not removing thoughts, because in Genesis, nothing is removed and nothing is gained. It's very important for you to know this. The state of agreement and resonance that exists, that is required for a field of plasma to be generated, requires the understanding that nothing is lost and nothing is gained. Now, this is the distinction between what your scientists in your world are looking at, because what your scientists are looking at with fusion, when two particles actually merge, that is a concept and an ideology whereby something is lost and something is gained. Because what is lost is a sense of those two particles in agreement and what is gained is something new. There is destruction and creation. What we want you to be aware of is that in order for a new paradigm of existence to be created for your world, it's not about destruction and it's not about creation. Now, this may somewhat negate what your minds had supposed that the old must be destroyed in order for the new to occur. We are not in agreement with this. What we would say the great challenge for humanity is, is to recognize the old, recognize the new, and to actually have them coexisting and come into a state of resonance. In this way, it is the demise of duality. Because you are no longer in opposition, you actually move into a space whereby the old sees the new, 
and the new sees an old, and they coexist. And what happens then if they can coexist, even if it's just ideologically for you and you're no longer fighting against or in resistance to the old or in resistance to the new, that field of plasma is created there. Nothing is lost and nothing is gained, but the view of life becomes completely different. And this is very, very important to understand because there are other galactic civilizations who are watching and observing you at this time, who are very interested in how this will occur within a logical third dimensional understanding for humanity that something must be destroyed in something in order for something to be created. How will that paradigm change? It will change when humanity is willing to actually view the old and the new side by side. In some ways, this is a paradoxical experience that actually surpasses your third dimensional limitation. And indeed it is the walk of the mystic because the mystic is one who can actually sustain within their awareness two opposing concepts and actually be comfortable with both. Now, how can you be comfortable with two opposing concepts? Even within your world at this time, how can you be comfortable with two opposing views? Well, it's very simple. You take your focus off the other view and you actually look to the space that's being created in the center. And this is what's happening for humanity at this time. If you're focusing on what's opposite to you, it's natural for you to be in opposition. If you focus on the space that's being created there, the plasma, what is possible in this space that requires two opposites in complete presence and fullness to be able to establish, that's where it gets very interesting. Because that's where you actually begin to witness and see what is new that is emerging. So your great possibility and potential at this time, blessed ones, is to understand that in order to create a new earth reality, in order to create a new world, not only for yourselves, but for each other, it's very important to recognize and understand where your focus is. Because plasma itself sits in an experience where there's no design placed upon it yet. So there's nothing really to distract you in it. There's nothing really for you to have hopes and dreams for in it. If you have hopes and dreams at this time, understand that those hopes and dreams are coming from the position that you find yourself in. We would invite you actually to put your hopes and dreams at rest and actually look to what is emerging. That's not to say that you cannot generate something that is inspiring, but this is indeed a collective experience at this time. And it's very easy for hopes and dreams to be based upon realities from the past. Hopes and dreams to be based upon recollections and memories. Many of you at this time are here on the planet and in this reality to reestablish humanity again, but you have dreams and visions from past eras of civilization. We would be very aware that this is not an experience where humanity is going to cycle back to where it was and perhaps try again that this is actually a launching and a seeding into a completely new paradigm of existence. So it's very important for you to be witness to this. Remember when two particles are resonating in exactly the same frequency, they can both witness holistically what is arising. 
In this way, it's challenging for humans at this time because while it may seem you are wanting to take action, there's also something within you that says it's not a time for action. It's a time for witnessing and observing, and indeed you would be correct. The action that is to be taken at this time, if any, is more an action of alert observation, alert presence, alert witnessing. Because when you are alert in your witnessing and your observation, your presence, you're actually representing one of these particles or perhaps both. Very interesting. So when we speak with you about fields of plasma, it's very important for you to understand that this is the potential, indeed the fabric of your dimensional reality that is existent everywhere. It is the nature of you, it is the nature of your world. It is the nature of the cosmos. It is the nature within the cells. But because your attention has been on the reference points, the unknown aspects, you've not been paying attention to the unknown. Indeed, the disarming of the collective human mind from the known is part of this redesign for your human reality, for you to be actually able to declare, I don't know anything anymore. I don't know what to believe. That's actually a very powerful approach because when you don't know what to believe, you're actually looking to the places that are not on the map. You're actually looking to the blank spaces. Very important because where human attention is, reality exists. Here are words. Where human attention is, human reality exists. So are you placing your attention on the marker points of what is known or are you placing your attention on the spaces between? It is the same approach when you would consider illness or dis-ease within the body. When you're looking to illness or dis-ease within the body, rather than looking at identifiable markers, sometimes this is a symptomatic marker, sometimes it is looking at cellular cause, what we would encourage you to do is to shift your attention just to the side of it. Because just to the side of it, is where a new design forms if you're willing to put your attention there. So when we speak about healing for the human form and yet also for the collective human consciousness, the most efficient experience of healing for you at this time is not so much in the identification of certain references or marker points in regards to cause and effect, but rather in shifting your attention slightly to the side and allowing yourself the space to discover what is yet to be revealed. It's very interesting. Some of you have already experienced this in terms of your own healings, whereby something that has arisen for you has given you an opportunity to discover something new about yourself that you didn't know was there. We call it the great reveal. And so a revealing and a genesis are not two separate experiences or events. A genesis and a revealing occurs in the same moment in your reality. How is this so? Well, humans always imagine that something is seeded and then it takes time and process for it to be discovered. That the potential is there for it, but it takes time and process for it to be actualized. And yet within a field of plasma, that's not how life occurs. Within a field of plasma, the design and the reveal is instantaneous. And again, here we have the problem for humans of third dimensional experience, whereby everything is a slow motion rollout, if you will. We prefer to see it as a slow motion replay. Because if you understand the nature of consciousness in your cosmos, you'll understand that consciousness in terms of your reality actually works retrospectively. In other words, 
what you are viewing in your reality at this time has actually already occurred and your consciousness is now witnessing it. How is this apparent to you? Well, when you look into your cosmos, for example, when you look into the sky and you see what you see is a star or a planet or there is light that you are seeing, science will say to you, or your current understanding of science perhaps, will say to you, well, you're actually seeing it after it already exists because of the distance and the time that is required for that reference point to reach your awareness or the light to put it in your linear terms to travel to your attention, it's actually already occurred. So that's not just in terms of what happens in the cosmos, that's actually in terms of what happens in your everyday reality. And this is why so many of you are feeling rather detached or uninspired by what is happening around you at this time because you're beginning to realize as your consciousness expands that all the aspects within your life up until this time have been viewed retrospectively, which means that in essence, you're viewing an echo. Your reality is becoming an echo effect. Perhaps this wasn't apparent to you earlier in your experience, but it's becoming more and more apparent now. Why? Because as your vibrational frequency in form increases, as your speed of resonance increases, as the bandwidth of vibrational capacity for your existence increases, the distance between where your consciousness views from and what you are viewing begins to decrease. So you actually begin to have an experience whereby you feel the stretch and you feel that you are becoming distanced from your reality. You feel that you're becoming distanced from family and friends, perhaps. You feel becoming distanced from the roles and identities that you've had. That's the stretch. You begin to realize that third dimensional reality is an echo and there's so much more of you. And then what happens is that once you begin to realize that, the field of plasma becomes apparent to you and you start to reconnect again or re-merge again. And this is when you really begin to create a new life. So for many of you at this time, you've been viewing retrospectively, you're experiencing the echo of life. It doesn't seem so lustrous to you anymore. And then there are moments where suddenly everything is very vibrant the colors and the sounds become very significant to you. And it seems as if everything is right there with you. You're a part of everything and it's a part of you. And what you experience is almost like a pulse, a pulse between feeling very detached and that what you're experiencing is an echo of reality. And then moments where you're very, very engaged and everything feels very vibrant and very available to you. Indeed, this is the pulse of fifth dimensional experience. And that's the pulse of you being holding the space for plasma and actually moving into it, holding the space for plasma and moving into it. So this is the experience from many of you at this time during this great transition on your planet, because you're moving into witnessing and being, witnessing and being, witnessing and being. And it's a pulse-like sensation that indicates to you that there is movement happening, but it's very difficult for you to find evidence for it in terms of linear progression, because what you're doing is you're actually pulsing in and out of time. And of course, of course, this is the nature of the cosmos. You know that time is not fixed. It's all dependent on when your attention sits. Now we do want to suggest that if you want to experience more of this sense of completion and this sense of witnessing and this sense of beginning to move into new creation, 
beginning to become a real participant in creation. The issue for many of you is, how do I feel as if I am in resonance? How do I feel as if I am in complete relaxation and agreement with what is happening? Because many of you at this time are feeling as if you're an incredible experience of duality and that you are here and others are here and that your ideology is here and others are here. And so what we say to you is that in these moments, it's very difficult for you to feel resonance because you're experiencing such apparent opposition. Now, if your scientists could embrace the possibility that electrical transference to generate magnetic power is not efficient enough to create fields of resonance, particularly within experiments with fusion chambers and so on. If they could embrace the possibility that there's another aspect of experience that can create fields of resonance very easily, they would be able to facilitate these fusion events quite simply. What we would suggest to you is that there is a very important element of experience within your reality that is not being used efficiently for many thousands of years. And that element of experience is sound. Now sound itself is in, imperative to the creation of fields of plasma and indeed in imprinting design on plasma. In other words, creating blue, new blueprints for experience. Sound is very, very important. So sound can actually ignite resonance between two particles. Sound is an accelerated way to have two different aspects of life actually move into a resonance very easily and therefore a plasma field for potential and creation appears very quickly. So sound, of, as you understand, is being used for certain architectural practices, it is being used to create form. It is being used to create certain fields of understanding throughout history. It's also being used to create certain permutations of genetic patterning within the body. The sound experience for you is in very, very important at this time. And the reason that it's important is because sound actually precedes light in your experience. There is sound and there is light. Light in your third dimensional experience is an effect of sound. It's how sound is experienced. It's how vibration is experienced. And between that sound and that light is where the field of plasma occurs. So in order for plasma to truly become a very efficient, recognizable, experience for creation in your reality, sound and light are both required. So how does this become relevant in your daily experience? It's very important for you because so many humans are very visually cued, which means that you will look for evidence of creation visually. You will look to see where is the evidence of form? Where is the evidence of something new? And humans in this way have become very visually cued. So in other words, if they can't see it, they don't believe it. If they can't ascertain it with their eyes, it's not possible. And yet what we say to you is that sound can facilitate that viewing. If you feel that something is possible, if you have a glimpse of something, but you cannot see the evidence for it, Understand that paying attention to the sound of your reality at this time, the sound within your body, the sound of the ringing in the ears that many of you are having at this time, understand that the more that you pay attention to your auditory experience of this reality, the more you're going to be able to see the visual manifestation and representation of new creation. So if for in your own personal experience, for example, you are saying, well, I know that this is possible, I feel it, but I just can't make it manifest, I just can't see it. Now remember that that original experience of wanting to create something does not come from a set intention, it's a possibility that appears within the plasma, because there's no intention in plasma, it's pre-intention. 
So something is possible. I wonder if this could happen. I wonder what this is. But you cannot see it coming to form or you're frustrated by that. Understand that sound can facilitate that experience far more easily. Because remember that plasma sits between two things. It can sit between you and your opposition, between your old life and your new life, between what you've had and what you want, or it can sit between sound and light. So we suggest that you explore this practice. The practice is listening very carefully to your experience, being so present that you are paying attention to the vibration and sound of your reality. Because remember, plasma can be formed between sound and light, but it can also be sensed more easily through sound than in light. Very important. Very important. So in the beginning, there was the word. Remember, in the beginning, there was the word. The sound precedes the light. So if you can, in your own meditative practices or your daily practices, whatever you are doing, become acutely aware of sound. It's actually going to accelerate the evidence for creation. It's going to accelerate your experience of new form. And what you will begin to discover is that the more that you are acutely sensing with your auditory experience, your reality, the faster the experience of change is going to be for you. Now, remember, you're a microcosm of the macrocosm. So when you do it for yourself, you're also doing it for the collective reality, the collective consciousness for humanity. Acutely listening. Now, it doesn't just need to be listening to your exterior reality. Quite often for you, it's actually going to be listening to your own interior reality. What is your own sound? What is the ringing in your ears? In your meditative practices, what is the sound within your own cells? Because every human has a very particular vibrational frequency. Each and every one of you has a particular energetic signature. And that energetic signature is a sound. Now, it's interesting to us because so many humans will say, well, what is your vibrationary field? What is your aura? What is your color? What is your light spectrum? Far more importantly is the question, what is your sound? What is your sound signature? Because the music of the spheres, the music of the cells, the music of the planets, the music of your galaxy, the music of the cosmos, all moves in accordance to sound and the resonance experience of certain signatures of sound. Very important for you. Sound is imperative. Your awareness of it accelerates your experience of genesis. And that is why humanity has long known, not in recent millennia, but has long known that sound is the most powerful, powerful tool that you have for understanding the genetic design within your body, understanding the cellular blueprints, and actually creating new ones. So here is a question. What does it mean when I don't like someone's sound or voice or tone? What it means in that moment is that it's not in harmonic resonance with you. Now, this is an important question because just because something's not in harmonic resonance with you, it doesn't mean to say something can't be created. That's why quite often it's with people that you aren't in resonance with or that you feel disrupted by that the most interesting creations occur. Perhaps you are triggered by something. Perhaps it encourages you to move or to do something differently. There's nothing like a bit of discomfort to get humans to change what they are doing. What you'll understand is that there are harmonic combinations of sound and resonance with humans that en enable you to stay in each other's presence for some time and have an experience of harmonious agreement. But there are other combinations of particular sounds 
that seem to be discordant that actually lead to a new creation. It's like when you have a chord in music that feels discordant, it naturally leads you into something else. It's a precursor to something new. So it's a very perhaps chaotic, but triggering experience to lead you into newness. So it's not to be avoided, it's to be understood. That's why the particular frequencies of tones that existed many thousands of years ago were often created in such a way that they felt slightly discordant because what it would do would it, it, is it would ignite a new understanding. Very important. Does your sound signature change as you create new realities? Well, we would say your experience of sound changes how you represent within your reality changes. Yes, we would agree, but it's not wise for you to see it as development and it's not wise for you to see it as evolution. Because what we would understand is that your signature can also change depending on what field of resonance you are sitting in. Just as a diminished chord will move to a more harmonious one, your signature can actually change depending on which particular environment that you're in. Now, if your question to us is, do I have a core signature? We would say unto you at your very core is plasma. And therefore it is always able to be redesigned. This is not about sustainability, it's about music. And you would not be enjoying your experience so much if you only had one tone to play with. Can sound healing help to facilitate this plasma experience and bring our body into a more harmonious frequency? Well, it's not so much about bringing your body into a harmonious frequency because that's a rest state. And what we're interested in is Genesis. So healing in our view is not rest, it's creation. And so perhaps humans experience a state of rest before they move into a new period of creation. But the impetus itself is not on creating stability, it's actually on creating new. So rather than use the term sound healing, we would say use the term sound facilitation for creation because it's igniting a new design in plasma or on plasma. Do I need to learn music? No, because you are music. You are sound. You are a living vibration. You are a living aspect of consciousness. My voice is required at all times, correct? Your sound is required at all times and your physicality enables your sound to become apparent within your earth reality. You may choose to express that sound through your voice, which then weaves design between yourselves and those who are listening to you. In that field of plasma, there is a design that is being woven. Is it a requirement? It is a great joy. That is what we would say unto you. Sound therapy. Again, we would not choose to use the word therapy. We would choose to use the word sound facilitation for creation, sound ignition for creation, because you're not trying to move something back into a state of equilibrium. If you're moving something into a state of equilibrium, you're not in a state of creation necessarily. The state of equilibrium is a precursor to creation. So perhaps you're moving from one design into equilibrium and then to the other. But ask yourself this, are you more interested in bringing a design back into potential or are you interested in potential becoming actualized? Both are possible with sound. But the human attention up until this time has been on bringing a design back into its potential. How interesting if some of you were interested in bringing potential into a new design. My hearing capacity on 3D level is worse than usual. Is this because I'm hearing sounds in other dimensions? Well, we would say it is not worse. We would say it's just that your attention is beyond it. 
the practice and joy here can be stretching your attention so that you're encompassing a greater field of awareness. That's what being multidimensional is. So the nature of plasma itself is very important for you at this time to understand because it is a state of existence that has not yet had any design attributed to it. It is as yet unpatterned. And your great potential at this time, blessed ones, in this earth reality experience is to actually be witness and to understand that humanity is moving from a set of blueprints back to a state of plasma so that a new set of blueprints can occur. It's very interesting to us that humanity has always identified itself with the blueprint rather than the actual substance upon which the blueprint is imprinted. It's so interesting to us. So interesting. Because you, perhaps, in your own personal experience, will identify with a story of your history or your soul blueprint, for example, or your genetic coding or your journey. Whereas the true nature of you is not the design, it's actually the substance that the design is placed upon. Just as if you had a blank sheet of paper and it was folded in a beautiful way to create a particular form or geometric design, would you identify as that geometric design or would you identify as the paper itself? Humanity at this time is going through a great unfolding. The geometric blueprints, the design for the limitations of human effect, the limitations of human experience, not only collectively and sociologically, geographically and economically, but also genetically, have been held by a particular blueprint. And what is happening within your earth reality at this time is that that particular design is unfolding. And it's unfolding back to potential so it can be now refolded and redesigned with a completely different set of possibilities. Now, what happens when an origami or a paper design begins to unfold? When it's been there for so long, hundreds of thousands of years, what begins to happen? It begins to unfold, and as it unfolds, the creases have been there for so long, it almost wants to go back together again. And so what the human mind says is, well, we this is unfolding. We need to repair it. We need to get it back to where it was. But what you realize as it's unfolding, if you can be gentle and allow it to come back, and if you can focus more on the interest in the paper itself rather than the design, you begin to see where the creases are. You begin to see where the folds in the paper are. And when the paper becomes flat once more, it's an incredible story of humanity. Once you've seen the story of humanity, then humanity can actually start to create a new design. And so you are in the great unfolding, blessed ones. So be aware that you're not identifying with the paper geometry, that you're actually identifying with the paper itself because that which you have believed you are is just a series of folds in the paper. Of course, the folds also delineate how you experience time and space, and that's unfolding for you as well, which is why your experience of time is different at this time. Some forms of light language appear to create the state of resonance for the whole human body to be in a state of genesis that brings in pure potential of plasma. This is so. And it's not about the meaning, it's about the sound frequency. Can solfeggio frequencies or binaural beats create certain effects? We would say, yes, play with it, but also look to the spaces between the notes. Look to the spaces between the notes. That's what we're going to say to you. That's where the really interesting potential is. I've been having inner ear infections recently. I wonder what the significance is. Those of you who are having issues with your ears at this time, it's actually designed, your body is getting you to pay attention to sound. 
Once you start paying attention to sound, you're going to find that your biology begins to recalibrate and adjust quite easily for you. So plasma. It's the nature of your universe. It's pre-matter. It's pre-designed. It's the very substance of your reality. Humanity attention is turning back towards the substance. This is the great reveal. The great reveal is the paper geometry, the paper origami unfolding so that you can actually see the story of humanity. Once you've seen it, once you've read the whole book, blessed ones, you're not really wanting to read it again. It's time for a new adventure for humanity. And that is why so many of your galactic brothers and sisters are here at this time, because this is the great reveal. It's the great unfolding. It's the great genesis. So where is your attention? Is your attention on trying to sustain what has already been written? Or is it now about becoming very excited and open and becoming a witness and co-creator in new designs? It's happening internally within you. It's happening externally within your earth story. It's also happening in your skies. Pay attention to what's being revealed in the skies. Don't look to the stars, look to the spaces between. What is appearing there? You're going to find some very interesting new references that begin to unfold for you. Remember, what is happening within your cells, what is happening within your biology is also happening throughout the cosmos. Humanity is not alone in this experience. There has only been a belief that you have been contained. Once you realize that there is no containment other than the belief that has kept your focus and attention here, if you're focusing on what is opposite to you, you cannot see what is sitting between you. Fusion, plasma, sound, light, genesis. It's all part of your human design. The story is not. Peace be with you, blessed one. Okay, wow, that went quickly. It did for me anyway. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure where we were going to go with that. I thought we might have gotten a little bit into the mechanics of, uh, of the creation of light, but we didn't. But thank you so much for, for joining us. I'm, I'm so appreciative for you being here. It doesn't happen without you. It's a co-creation. <laughs> so um, I look forward to joining with you all again at some point when we have our next conversation. Uh, for those of you who are interested in discovering more, just go to my website, rebeccadawson.net. There's lots of free content there. I have a feeling we're going to put this up on YouTube as well, so you can probably find it there. And the recordings will be emailed to you uh, within the next 24 hours uh, if you have signed up and registered. So thanks very much, everyone. I wish you an amazing rest of the year. And uh, let's see where humanity goes next. <laughs> Big love to everyone. Bye.